It is my pleasure to welcome you this day in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
who as the hymns that we just sang, we come to praise, to honor, and to worship. There were a couple of things that took place this morning that uh, were kind of uh, nice things. Uh, as I, I got to the sanctuary early and, and it was peaceful and quiet. And, and the next thing I heard uh, about 9.30 were the sounds of little voices coming into uh, the classrooms. You could hear them coming in and oh, they were excited. They were full of joy and happiness. And that's the way we come today too. We should come excited to be here the other thing I noticed was, gosh, there were people here. There were lots of people here. And that was wonderful. And that's the way it should be every week. We should come and, and enjoy the class time together. We should bring our children so that they can learn also. This is the place we need to be. So we need to maybe go to bed a little earlier on Sunday night, so we can get up a little earlier, or maybe we need to have a meeting every week at 9.30 that the congregation is interested in. I'm interested in the class. We have some excellent classes. Another thing I'd like to, uh, this is something pertaining to uh, the order of worship, something that I've noticed for some time now. The service isn't over until the music stops. And immediately after the priesthood start to leave the platform, it gets very noisy in here. And we have people that have given their time and their energies to bring us music ministry. And if you would sit quietly and close your eyes and listen to that postlude, oh, what ministry it brings. You might try that. This week in preparation, I was kind of uh, drawn to Peter for some reason. And uh, most of us, we remember Peter because uh, he was one that denied Christ three times. He was uh, a little bit uh, ambitious and, and, uh, and a little bit uh, quick to, uh, to act. He was the one that cut off the ear of the... Uh, of the uh, soldier in the uh, in the garden but he also he was also the one that uh, stepped out of the boat when Jesus asked someone to come to me Peter also he was very valiant in his testimony once he uh, recognized Christ when asked as Jesus Christ the son of the living God he was imprisoned he was whipped I was reading uh, in another book that I had that said uh, they were usually beaten uh, with 40 lashes shot, short of one and they were beaten Three time, uh, 13 times from the front across each shoulder and then turn around and whip 13 times on their back. He was also freed from the prison by the angels and he was one of the first of the apostles to perform a miracle in the healing of, uh, of one in need of healing. May we all be like, uh, like Peter and not be afraid to step out of the boat. Not be afraid to speak up and to speak out about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so for a scriptural setting this morning, I have selected from the first epistle of Peter, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though not for a season, if need be ye are in heaviness, heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the object of your faith, even salvation of your souls. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today and the setting that you have given us to come worship you, Lord. And Lord, I ask that your spirit will rest upon us and open our mind and our ears to hear the message that you have given to Brian to bring to to bring forth today. Father, I ask that you will be with Brian, that his words may come out and be spoken with authority, Lord, and that we may listen and we may heed the calling that comes from you to serve you, Lord. I pray these things in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning for a scripture reading, I'll be reading from the book of Luke, from the 12th chapter. I'll be reading part of what I'll reread um, during our message.
Therefore, seek ye to bring forth the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This he spake unto his disciples, saying, Sell ye all that you have, and give alms. Provide not for yourself bags which wax old, but rather provide a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and have your lights burning, that you yourselves may be like unto men who wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him, Immediately. Verily I say unto you, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. For he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. For behold, he cometh in the first watch of the night, and he shall also come in the second watch, and again shall he come in the third watch. And verily I say unto you, He hath already come, and it is written of him. And again, when he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, blessed are those servants when he cometh, that he shall find so doing. Good morning. It's a pleasure to see all of you today. Um, I guess I have two confessions to make. 
Um, I had a um, I had a dream this week um, that I was preaching. Uh, I knew I was preaching. I had a dream in which I was preaching. Um, I don't remember anything about the dream other than by the end of the dream, by the end of the sermon, everyone was gone. Um, so I don't know if that means anything in particular um, about the met. No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe I was thinking about today. That's good. And then I noticed that. Uh, oops. Someone provided musical instruments for me today, um, so I don't know if I'll break those out or not. But. What's that? Yeah, we can have the deacons pass them out here in a little bit. Um, thank you. Um, I think like any man that stands at this pulpit, um, he's, uh, he's made very aware of his limitations. Um, but it's a comfort to know that I stand here not for myself, uh, but I stand here for my Heavenly Father. And uh, it's my desire today to share with you what um, has been placed upon my heart. And what's been placed upon my heart is uh, an increasing desire that I myself, in my own walk, become more of a doer and less of a hearer. Um, there's been an increasing desire in my heart to be more anxiously engaged in the work of my Heavenly Father. And uh, the word servant I've heard several times this morning already. Um, and it is uh, of a servant that I would like to speak this morning. And it is this setting of scripture that I have been led to this morning that speaks of servanthood. And so that is where we will place our attention today. I hope that as uh, it has done for me, that some of these things might prick your heart, that uh, these thoughts might be given in love, uh, not in judgment. Um, when our Lord has corrected when our Lord corrects, he corrects out of love because he hopes to lift up. And that is what I would hope to lift up as well. If you're familiar with uh, the Gospels, the, uh, the parable of the servant is mentioned in two of the Gospels. It's mentioned in Mark and in Luke. And the, the parable of the servant in Mark and uh, Luke is actually split into three parts. Um, and before I started spending time with it, I really wondered why he said the same thing. It sounds like the same thing sort of three times in different ways. Um, and you'll notice that there's some similarities there, but there seems to be a specific goal um, that the Lord is trying to get across as he speaks of servanthood. He's speaking, um, and really the audience here is, is, is his disciples um, who he's speaking with, and, and he's just got done talking to them about um, taking no heed for your body, uh, what you shall eat or what you should put on. The life is more, life is more than raiment. Um, he's, he's, he's speaking of the ravens, um, trying to get them to understand that I am God and I will provide. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And then he starts talking about servanthood. And I think there's really a connection between those two things, and that connection is trust, and that connection is faith. So I want to go back into Luke and start a little bit in the middle of where I, I had just read. Let your loins be girded about with... No, I need to go back up. I'm sorry. Therefore, seek ye to bring forth the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I find that uh, those verses are very comforting, and they're very important for us to remember. It's very important for us to remember that the goal of our Heavenly Father is to save each and every one. And unfortunately... At times, we often find ourselves feeling unworthy. 
we often find ourselves feeling um, like we are not acceptable. And we do this because we, we look inward and we see our faults and we see our decisions and we see our failings. And our Lord is a God of forgiveness. And he says to that, I see that, but you're forgiven. Now, rise up and follow me. And so this invitation of when we talk about servants here today, this call to be a servant is this call to each one of you and to me. Luke, in a little while, will say, Lord, is this parable to us or to all? And Jesus says, no, this is to all, this call to be a servant. Your father would like to give you the kingdom. And if you recall, he didn't make anyone to cast them away. He didn't make anyone with the intention of seeing them fall away. He created all with the hope of sharing the riches of heaven with them. He wants you to be with him like a parent would like their children to be with them. Let your loins be girded about and have your lights burning, that you yourselves may be like unto men who wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open immediately unto him. There's a there's no if in that statement. There's only a when in that statement. When the Lord cometh and knocketh, will we be ready? Will we be watching? Will we have the desire, even, to open up to him? Have we prepared ourselves to open up to him? Verily I say unto you, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. For he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. It's quite interesting, isn't it? He's coming back to us. He's asked us to be watching. But when he comes, what will he bring? Other scriptures speak of a feast of fat things. He will bring the riches of heaven with him. For behold, he cometh in the first watch of the night, and he shall also come in the second watch, and he shall come in the third watch. And verily I say unto you, he hath already come. As it is written, of him. He's speaking of himself here. The master has already come once, and he is in your midst. Just as surely as I am here now, I'm going to come again. And those servants need to be watching. Those servants need to be waiting. Blessed are those servants who when he cometh, that he shall find so doing. It seems awful hard today, in this day, to do this watching and to do this waiting. And it seems awful like I've been waiting a long time. Is this ever going to happen? When is this... 
When is the second watch going to occur? Are all the efforts that I have put forth, that I have put forth thus far, are those efforts in vain? No. No. The efforts that I might make today to be watching, yet he might not come tomorrow. Would my efforts today be in vain? No. No. Are we the people, if the Lord came today, that he would say, blessed are you for your watching? When I was led to this set of scriptures, this pierced me like a knife. I don't feel like he could say that to me. I need to do better. I need to do better at this. It seems hard to watch, but there's other people that have watched, and there are other people that have waited. We can recall the setting in Helaman and in Third Nephi, and in fact, if you go into the Book of Mormon and you look at all the places where the people prophesied that Jesus was coming soon, the Lord is coming. He is coming. And they speak of Mary, and, and it, King Mosiah speaks of Mary, and prophesies of Jesus' birth. And then you look at the bottom of the page and find out how many years it was till Jesus actually was born. Man, they were talking about that for a long time. What about those of us that have gone on. There have been some wonderful servants in this congregation. That have spent their whole lives watching. Was their faith in vain? No. No. Because we're waiting, we're waiting and watching for our Heavenly Father. He's called us to be faithful. He's called us to continue in that faith. He's called us to be diligent in that faith. Just as surely as our God came in the meridian of time to lay down his life, just as surely as he's come before, he is coming again. This setting in Luke that speaks of servants, to me, is a promise. It is the goal. It is the thing that we're looking for. We're looking for as servants. We're looking for the return of our Heavenly Father because when he comes, he's going to gird himself. He's going to sup with us, and we will spend time with him. There's another setting. It's, it's very similar, and it is not new to us where we hear a very similar thing. And now, verily, I say these things unto you that you may know this, that the coming of the Lord is as a thief in the night. And it is like unto a man who is a householder, who, if he watcheth not his goods, then the thief cometh in an hour which he is not aware, and taketh his goods, and divideth them among his fellows. And if they had said among themselves, if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and have not suffered his house to be broken through and the loss of his goods. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Be ye therefore ready, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. It is not important that we know when our Lord is going to come. 
However, if you consider um, what, what, uh, what the conversations are had um, in other denominations, um, there, is a, there is a clear um, agreement uh, within Christianity that these are the last days. Now, we might stop and consider um, who's the first person to declare that that we are in the last days. That comes from Joseph Smith, Jr. All of Christianity is is sort of catching on to what we've been given since 1830. We're in the last days. I'm sure, like yourself, you've looked at society today. Um, if things were subtle 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if sin were subtle, it is not. It is no longer. And in fact, sin is no longer subtle. Sin is now um, uh, how... How dare you suggest that my sin is not acceptable? Um, When when we speak of the the um, the times in which we live, um, we're simply told to look for the hour. We're simply told to look for the season and know what season we are. And simply knowing the season is supposed to be our reminder. Be faithful servants. Continue watching. Be very careful and be diligent. I heard a story, um, I I probably won't share it very good, but I heard a story on the radio. um, And um, it goes like this. There was a... The devil was talking with three angels. And they were talking about how best to deceive mankind. And the first angel suggested, these are fallen angels. The first angel suggested, let's, let's try to convince mankind that there is no God. And Satan said, no. People instinctually know that there is a God. That may fool some people, but it won't fool all people. So what else have we got? And so the second angel suggested, well, let's try to convince people that there is no hell. And Satan said, no, I think people, that might fool some people, but most people know that there is right and wrong. And then the third angel said, I know. Let's convince people that there is no hurry. Let's convince people that there is no hurry. And I think this is true. I think this is true. That it's so easily so easy to believe that there is no hurry. There's no reason, there's no reason to be a servant today. I intend to do that. There is no hurry. And as we get into this third section, I, I believe that there is a reason why it's so important that we believe that there is a reason to respond sooner and not procrastinate the day of our repentance. There is a hurry. Because every day we miss with our Heavenly Father is a day that we miss the ability to have the impress of His Spirit upon our souls. It's a day that we miss to allow Him to change us and to mold us into who He wants us to be. 
This is when Peter says, Lord, speak thou this parable unto us or unto all. Are you talking to just this 12 of us or whoever is gathered? Are you speaking to everyone? And the Lord said, I speak unto those whom the Lord shall make rulers over his household to give his children their portion of meat in due season. Your heavenly father has shared with you a part of himself. He has shared with you a part of his spirit. And you're here today. We're all here today because we've responded to that spirit. Um, We felt the call of that spirit. And we felt the call of that spirit sufficiently to become baptized, perhaps, and to allow that baptism to, to cause us to make decisions in our lives. And the Lord here is reminding us that the things that he shared with us are shared with us for a reason. The gospel, uh, that portion of spirit that he's given to us, he's given to us for the express purpose that it might be given to his children so that his children might be blessed in his absence. I want to to go just a little bit more. And they said, who then is this faithful and wise servant. And again, the Lord said unto them, it is that servant who watcheth to impart his portion of meat in due season. Blessed be that servant whom his Lord shall find when he cometh so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler of all that he hath. But the evil servant is he who is not found watching. He will say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to meet, beat the men servants and the maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken. And the Lord of that servant will come in a day that he looketh not for. And at an hour when he is not aware, and he will cut him down and will point him his portion with the unbelievers. If if before we were reminded that that the Lord is coming and we should be watching, and then we were reminded that the Lord is coming, but you're to be prepared even though you don't know when, we're now reminded that the faithful servant is that servant who takes what is given and imparts it during this time of waiting. This is that faithful servant that, that realizes that um, while the master is away from the estate, we could imagine an estate, the grounds quite large, um, with, uh, with grounds to be kept and things to be cleaned and, and children to be taken care of. And, and so there's, there's things to do during this waiting period. And the purpose of the riches that we've been given are to, to be a blessing unto the children um, to whom we are uh, given uh, 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 the responsibility to watch for. Um, what you might imagine that um, there's a storehouse in this estate, and this storehouse is full of all these wonderful things. And um, the servants then would have to the, look at the storehouse to, to see what is there and then um, to use the things that are stored in there um, to, and to, to meet them out um, with wisdom so that they might be a blessing and so that there's, there's store for them at the end. I imagine that there would there'd be plenty, plenty there uh, for that duration. You might imagine um, if you're a servant, you've been given the keys to that storehouse. That there's this room full of all the goodness that God's given, and, 
and, and we have the keys to them. And, and priesthood in the Doctrine and Covenants, it speaks of the keys that you hold, the keys of the blessings of heaven. And the keys are only good if we, if we realize that there is something uh, marvelous to be unlocked with those keys. And that the Lord gave those keys for the reason that between the time that he left and the time that he comes back, that his children can be blessed. Priesthood, have you, have we sought to unlock and understand those keys? I also felt, um, I also felt to remind us um, that a steward here, um, like I mentioned, um, has to be very careful about how the things that God's entrusted to him are used. No matter um, who we are and what station in life we've been given, you and I, we've all been given this body. And of all the gifts that, that, um, that are wow, most precious, our God has given us this body. And imagine um, how God-like this body is. Um, imagine how much freedom you've been given to see and to taste and to hear and to experience all the things of this life. And we take for granted um, how powerful it is um, all these sensations that we take in and how easy it is um, uh, being given uh, almost this godlike status on this earth to to act and to act upon but never to have God make us follow him how easy it is to to allow um, to allow our bodies and our souls to become pointed in the, in, the, in the direction that points towards us. And what did the servant do? He was eating and drinking and, um, and, and drunken. And, um, and where did that food come from? Where did the drink come from? Who's, whose things were the servants using on themselves. They were, they were using the master's things for themselves. Um, we might think that um, it doesn't matter uh, so much what happens to um, what we see and what we partake of and what we experience but the Lord intended that a holy and righteous purpose be accomplished with the things that he left for us the world around us has invented all kinds of amazing and interesting ways to use those things that God has left for us to use and most of those involve um, turning them into something that can bring us pleasure And we see those things, and it's how easy it is to accept that that is what they're, what they're there for. But if we just start to think about it differently, if we just start to think about it differently, um, all of the things around us, what if they were used for the benefit of God's people? If we just start to think about um, we're we're stewards over um, the spiritual blessings in our lives. We're stewards over the temporal blessings in our lives. We're stewards over our physical bodies and the efforts of our physical bodies. We're stewards over the gifts and the talents that he's placed within you. And what if all of those things were really re returned back to him and pointed and all those efforts pointed back at him? I think that's what he hoped that his servants would do.
think that's what he hoped his servants would do with those things. Last week, coming to church, I turned on the radio, and I was looking for a specific station. My father-in-law he told me about there's this radio station that, that's got um, sort of like uh, KLJC used to be a long time ago. They actually have preachers preaching and speaking about the gospel, and not all of them are great, but you know, what a great thing to do. To keep your mind on the on the Lord is to you know, is to is to be there and you know listen to us. So I, I've been doing that. It's been wonderful, um, and uh, I experienced this interesting thing last week where I was coming to church. I was I wanted to be focused on the Lord, but I, that radio station wasn't coming through very strong, and so I half heard a sermon, and I half heard this song, sort of a fun '80s song at the same time like a journey song and you know these digital radios anymore you can't just turn them and 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 you know try to fine tune them it's either you're either on that thing or you're not and so if i wanted to hear that um i heard don't stop believing at the same time um which i guess is sort of fitting um i hadn't thought about that till now um but um you and I, um, we're all filters. We're all receivers. And every single day, that's the same, that is the situation that we, we find ourselves in, is that um, we find ourselves and in, in we, know that, we know that our Heavenly Father would like to have a relationship with us today. But at the same time, we see and hear and experience this, this stuff coming at us at the same time. And oh, how difficult it is to tune it so that we only hear our Heavenly Father. Man, how tough that is. That's really, really tough. But I'll just submit that, um, and I believe this to be true, that when we find time with our Heavenly Father, that we grow grace upon grace. Sort of like the scriptures speak of Jesus learning grace upon grace. And when we get ourselves focused on him, there isn't an, there, we don't automatically achieve, we don't automatically get there, right? He builds his spirit with us. It grows over time. That closeness, it grows over time. It, it, we, don't, we can't just go from being here to being here. He, he leads us to him. And he teaches us, and, and, and he makes his, our character like him, but it doesn't happen in one day. But at the same time, the more we attend to anything else, we're told that he withdraws himself with us. He withdraws himself. And so then we find ourselves, we're like way over here. And it's really hard to get back. And it's hard to feel that spirit that we once felt. Have you felt that? Have you found yourself... Last Two weeks ago, Neil talked about how he, he was running the marathon. I don't run, so... Um, and he found himself at the bottom of the hill and how hard it was because he had sort of gone downhill gradually. And then he looked and he was at the bottom of the hill. Do you remember that? And he looked up and how hard it was to climb the hill. That's what we feel like when we have spent and not attended to our Heavenly Father. That's how we feel. And so that is why I believe that um, I can no longer um, I can no longer wait. Um, we cannot wait to be good servants um, until um, he shows up at our door. Because if we do, we're not going to be that servant that's ready to open immediately and say, come on in, let's, let's sup together. We're not going to be able to withstand his presence. We need to attend to him um, and be the faithful servant that um, is 
continually looking. And yes, that does mean that when we hear and see, it is uh, the things of God and the things of the earth, um, and we think, uh, I, I'll need to do things with God today. Um, that, there's no hurry, is, um, is the thing that trips us up. Um, uh, Neil, Neil asked us um, to uh, work out our salvation with fear and trembling today. Um, let us do that. Um, let us, let us uh, not be deceived by there's no hurry because our relationship with our Father, our Heavenly Father, um, there is no quick fix and there is no quick hurry for that. Um, he wants you. He wants to share his, his kingdom with you. Um, that's his work and his glory. So let us be very careful. Um, let us uphold each other in our efforts to be servants of our Heavenly Father and encourage each other to uh, keep our eyes single to the glory of God. Brian, I want you to look around. They're still here. <laughs> Larry challenged me today to do the offering, and in that challenge, he asked, well, I didn't ask, he just mentioned that he likes to hear stories, and I don't know if he likes mine or not, but I will tell a short story. My hero when I was growing up was the man that went to the moon. Neil Armstrong was a hero for me as a young child because I thought, if he can accomplish that, look what I could accomplish. Well, as I got older and learned more about what it took for him to get there, he was a man of science, a man of mathematics. He taught mathematics at a college. But he always was the one up for the challenge. I was a lucky guy when I was in my early 20s. I used to fly a corporate airplane, and I flew Neil Armstrong around the country a few times. And I flew him to an anniversary celebration of the 20th landing of the moon. And, and I got to talk to him very little, but each time I flew him somewhere, I'd ask one or two questions, but you know, usually left him on his own, because Neil's a very private guy. He doesn't really like to share a whole lot, because being a public person was not his goal in life. He wasn't, as he says, cut out to be the public speaker like I feel I'm not. He wasn't cut out to be the one that people looked up to like I was trying to do to him. He says, I'm just a man. I tried to convey that when I put that first foot on the moon. I asked him one of those times, what's your motivation and how do you give that your all every time? And he says, I start with God. God was always the challenger in my life. My mother taught me to believe in God first. Take God with you everywhere you go, and you'll do great things. So she taught me to give back what God gave to me, and that's what I'm asking you to do today. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we've come before you today to step in as your servant, to do as you would have us do, to follow your word, to guide others to you, and to show them how that you would have them be. We ask that you would take the money and our talents that we share today and guide them as we want them to help others in their lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come here today and worship you. I pray that you would go with us this week as we go about our lives, and I pray that you would help us to be watchful servants in these last days, that we would be servants for you and servants for those around us. I pray these things in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.